Hey everyone, welcome back uh, on this journey of vitamin D cofactors. Uh, thanks for watching. We're on number five already, it's hard to believe. Um, but today we're going to be learning about iodine. Uh, so you might ask, well, what is iodine? Uh, well, according to the National Institute of Health, it's a mineral. Um, it can be found in some foods. Uh, the body needs iodine, they say, to make thyroid hor hormones. Uh, these hormones control the body's metabolism. Uh, as well as many other important functions. So anyways, the recommended amount is anywhere from 110 to about 150 micrograms. Uh, if you ever heard of iodized salt, well, that has iodine in it. So uh, I never even really knew about iodine. I was like, what, you know, I, I, I didn't even know what iodine was. Like, I mean, I've heard of magnesium before, but I was like, iodine, what is that? You know, it's kind of like, you know, boron, which is a whole nother, uh, topic, but, um, you know, looking into the research here, uh, starting off from vitamin D wiki, uh, I, I saw this map and I figured I wanted to show you guys this because it kind of has a good, I'm a visual learner. So this is, uh, you know, this kind of speaks to me right here. Um, so most of the U S and North America, South America, Central America, you know, are, uh, about zero to twenty percent deficient, um, which they're saying deficient would be under a hundred. I believe that's uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, micrograms. So, anyways, um, the U.S. and most of North America, South America, Central America um, are sufficient, uh, according to this anyway. Uh, and then over here, if you go to Africa, most of Africa, Northern Africa. Uh, Europe, uh, Asia is about pretty similar to us, and then you have Australia down here that's all in red, which seems like most of them is, most of, most of the folks from over there are deficient in iodine. Um, and a lot of this has to do with the water, because uh, the water can contain iodine. So if your water sources are deficient in iodine, you're most likely going to be deficient in iodine. And you don't want to be deficient in iodine because for one, it's going to throw off your, um, your hormone regulation. Um, and then also, uh, you can also get goiter, which is like a swelling of the thyroid. So not good, not good at all. So yet another kind of visualization, uh, that I wanted to show you guys. Um, so I know, uh, over here in Switzerland, they're saying that they have increased, uh, this is according to vitamin D wiki has incre has greatly increased the amount of iodine in all their salt over the past 60 years. So starting off in 1975 is 3.75 micrograms per kilogram. Uh, and they've steadily increased all the way up to 20 uh, in 1998. So down here at the bottom is saying Swiss iodine intake may be 2x that of the US. Uh, and that's because they fortify all their salt, not just the table salt, but all the salt that they sell uh, has um, increased amounts of iodine because of the fortification. Then if we move down here uh, a little further, we see the US map um, where these uh, kind of diagonal lines going across here are the areas where uh, goiter frequency is five, five or more cases per 1,000 people. Uh, and then the red is where we have a known iodine deficiency in the drinking water. So you can see they kind of correlate with each other. Um, you know, where there's less iodine, there's more goiter cases. So, um, I just found that rather interesting. You know, like I said, I'm a visual learner. So, uh, just kind of goes to show, you know, if you're not getting your iodine, uh, it's quite possible you can end up with uh, goiter. So then down here, we also have the 30% of the globe has less than, uh, 100 micrograms of iodine. Like I was saying, uh, the National Institute of Health of Santa, for a healthy adult, they need to have about 150 micrograms per day. So like I was saying in my other videos, I've been showing you all how these cofactors are more than just associated with vitamin D. There's more of a cause and effect to it. Um, with iodine, it was more of just an association. Like, you know, you take vitamin D and iodine or you're deficient in both of them, uh, then you're more likely to have this happen. Um, so with that being said, let's jump into the research that I found. And right here is saying uh, vitamin D and iodine status was associated with the risk and complication of type 2 diabetes, my, type 2 diabetes mellitus in China. 
this was in this is actually a rather recent find or publication here um, in 2021. And this is from the Open Life Sciences Journal. So in the abstract, they're talking about the purpose of the study was to assess the relationship between 25 hydroxy D, uh, which is what or 25 OHD, which is what they measure in your blood uh, when you go to your doctor and ask for a vitamin D test. Um, and then they're also measuring the urinary iodine concentration, the UIC, which is a pretty standard measure of the amount of iodine that you're getting in your diet. Um, and type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is T2DM, uh, rather interesting abbreviation there. So in this study, they're just kind of trying to establish a relationship between, like I said, the, the, the vitamin D and the UIC, uh, the urinary iodine concentration. And they had a total of 567 uh, adult patients, so that was pretty pretty decent amount of folk, uh, pretty decent amount of folks that they have uh, in this study. We're just going to kind of skip past all the gobbledygook here and jump right into the discussion. Uh, so they're saying in the study we found that vitamin D and iodine levels were much lower in the type 2 diabetes mellitus patients than in the control subjects. Uh, the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency in type 2 diabetes. Um, was 48%, but the control was 24%. Oh, so that's pretty good. Uh, it's about half that. Uh, the this study also showed that iodine deficiency in 34% of the type 2 diabetes uh, cases and about 8% in the controls. So basically, I just want to point out that what they're saying here is approximately about half the people who have type 2 diabetes are vitamin D deficient, uh, and then about a third of those uh, all the same people are deficient in iodine um, compared to the controls, which were much less or can found to be significantly less, um, you know, according to the Pearson scale. I also would like to point out uh, they were taking these uh, levels from people who live in the southern part of China. Uh, they have access to good seafood. They have access to milk. Um, they have access to uh, sunshine, obviously, because they're on the coast. And they've also greatly improved their fortification of iodine in the food. Um, so the fact that they also found that these people were still deficient in them, despite having multiple advantages over somebody who lives in the northern part or in a country that doesn't um, fortify their food with iodine, uh, still is rather interesting that they still somehow ended up being deficient. And right here in this next paragraph, it says, Right here, this study reported a reduction in 25 OHD levels, again, your vitamin D level, and iodine level in the Chinese population before the onset of type 2 diabetes. Significant inverse correlations. Uh, you gotta look out for that word, significant inverse correlations, which and what that means is uh, when they say inverse correlation, that means there's that cause and effect, or there's more than an association when you have a significant inverse correlation. Uh, between 25, 25 OHD levels, uh, the urinary iodine concentration and the type 2 diabetes risk were found. So what they're saying is uh, the reason that they believe that vitamin D and iodine play a role in this is one, because uh, vitamin D, the active form of it, form of it 125 dihydroxy vitamin D, um, can stimulate your pancreas, your pancreas to release insulin. Um, and by doing so, you have a greater response to, uh, you know, glucose levels, and apparently it can also stimulate um, like the the receptors of the insulin. So, or what they said was to elevate the expression of the insulin receptors, and so therefore they're they're saying that an early correct correction to vitamin D uh, before you end up with or before you end up with type two diabetes um, could potentially prevent you from getting it. So secondly, they're saying that iodine could, um, or they know that it regulates your thyroid hormone. So uh, that in turn kind of regulates your metabolism. Uh, and then through that, they're saying that, you know, further on down the road, uh, if you're deficient in iodine, that could, you know, cause some issues uh, with your metabolism um, and your, therefore your insulin resistance. Uh, so, but that's just what they're kind of, theorizing they don't really know for sure exactly you know why if you're deficient in iodine you might be more likely to have uh, type 2 diabetes so they're just saying that 
more needs to be studied on that, uh, but that's a possibility. So like I said, there was uh, very limited research as far as um, how vitamin D and iodine work together. Uh, but I found this other uh, article here talking about uh, the role of iodine and delta iodolactone in growth and apoptosis of malignant thyroid epithelial cells and breast cancer cells. Now, we don't have to know exactly what iodolactones are. So basically, I ran across some research that said if you were deficient in uh, iodine or basically less than the 150 that your micrograms that you're supposed to be taking per day, um, that you're not going to create idolactones. Um, so basically if you don't have enough iodine, then your body's not going to create these, um, which from what I could gather was adding like an oxygen or into, um, the iodine, um, element, but, uh, that's some complicated chemistry stuff. And all we basically need to know is, Hey, if, if you don't have enough iodine, you're not going to create these. If you're not going to create these, um, then they can't destroy the uh, malignant uh, th thyroid epithelial cells or the breast cancer cells, which I, I found that was rather interesting because I have seen some uh, some associations between vitamin D. Um, and if you're deficient in vitamin D, then you were more likely to end up with, uh, say, breast cancer, for instance. Um, I think there was like lung and uh, colon and a few other types of cancer as well. Um, but one of them was being breast cancer. So I wonder if somehow, you know, the vitamin D is somehow associated also with the iodine, uh, since it both seem to kind of play a role in the thyroid. So right here in, uh, the abstract is saying the objective, um, as we previous, as we have previously demonstrated, so it's already been demonstrated once the in inhibitor, in inhibitory effect of iodine on thyroid cell growth is mediated by idolactones, especially 6-iodine-5-hydroxy. I'm not going to bother trying to pronounce that, but basically a delta idolactone. Uh, in this communication, we compare the effects of iodide, molecular, molecular iodine, and delta idolactone on growth inhibition and apoptosis on three human thyroid carcinoma cell lines, uh, as well as on human breast cancer cells, MCF7. Uh, and the apoptosis is basically like uh, creating uh, programmed cell death. And so apoptosis is a lot better than the, the alternative, which is necrosis, uh, which is basically uh, same thing, cell death, but it's not programmed. It's just more of a external reaction, uh, something causing uh, your cells to die, uh, which sets off a huge inflammatory reaction. The apoptosis is much better because it's basically your cell saying, okay, I want to go ahead and die now. Uh, and I'm going to be, you know, dis discharged in the urine or whatever. Um, so the apoptosis is much better. So down here at the bottom in the conclusion, it's just saying that the, the delta idolactane uh, seems to be the main uh, idol compound, which uh, can inhibit gr growth. Uh, and by I iodo compound, it's just saying that the main iodine compound, because uh, it's a compound of iodine. Uh, which can inhibit growth and induce apoptosis in B CPAP, CPAP cells as well as in the MCF7 uh, breast cancer cell. So you guys have it right here. Uh, I'm providing you the research. This was from 2010, so it's been around for a little while um, that they've known about this. Uh, you know, and I just find it rather fascinating that, you know, you have one study saying that iodine uh, can reduce breast cancer uh, you know, or cause breast cancer cell death. Uh, and then I've also seen other research that says that vitamin D also um, can reduce your risk of breast cancer. So uh, I wouldn't want to be deficient in either one of those. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to wrap up uh, this iodine, uh, or the, I'm sorry, this vitamin D cofactor video, which is iodine. Um, and as you can see, there's several associations, if not stronger, uh, between the iodine and vitamin D. Uh, and then working together to, you know, reduce your risk of one type two diabetes. And also you have the reduction in risk of breast cancer and thyroid uh, cancer. So uh, I just wanted to leave you guys with that. Uh, again, if you haven't checked out my other cofactor videos, I encourage you to do that uh, and see you in the next cofactor video. Oh, and also don't forget to uh, check me out on Instagram. It's Ethan Jones 7101. Uh, I'm also on Twitter. You can check me out there as well. Anyway, see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.